only one DC movie comes out in theaters and it ends up bombing? Time to pull some water out of that BBS well. And frankly, who can blame McFarlane for having done so since there's actually a good amount of interpretations and different characters and variants to pull from that movie since the movie itself is kind of all over the place. So I figured that one incarnation of Batman that we have yet to get, or at least we were have yet to have gotten from that film that surprisingly a lot of people really wanted was a McFarlane version of the Nightmare Batman from the Nightmare sequence that was somewhat crowbarred into the movie. I gotta be honest, I think Snyder simply just thought it looked cool and that's why it's in the movie. But hey, who can really argue against a really metal looking Batman wearing a trench coat, having a machine gun in a post-apocalyptic world that was taken over by Darkseid and an evil Superman? I mean, come on, it just kind of writes itself. And so in DC Multiverse 7 inch scale, we finally got that version of Batman. Of course, since then, there's been some hurdles that we have to have gone over as far as the BVS likeness, as far as Ben Affleck actually coming through in figure form. And I feel like maybe, just maybe, we managed to hit a little bit of a mediary in that problem, in that issue. But it comes at the quote-unquote expense, even though I don't consider it that much of a bad expense. But it just comes in the compromise of not having it be in the true BVS version of Batman, but rather the Nightmare version, where he's wearing the trench coat, where he's got the added details and uh, pieces of apparel that is not the quintessential Batman you, you would expect. And it's frankly because of those traits that made me not really look forward to this guy when it was fully unveiled back when they finally put the P VVS wave for pre-order. Apart from Wonder Woman and getting a reissued Superman with that Doomsday Pack, Nightmare Batman, I thought to myself, well, that's kind of neat, but it was never really on my wish list. I would sooner rather have that armorized Batman. But frankly, I think this guy might just become a little bit of a McFarlane sleeper for the year. Don't get it twisted, it's still nevertheless feeding into the reason for why these figures shipped out so quickly. It's because a good chunk of them are simply just reissues or retools of previously existing Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman figures that he simply just had to like make some tweaks, some modifications to then be in accordance to the way that they appeared in BVS. So here, it's not really that much different. He simply just took the BVS buck that we got released at the beginning of 2024 and slapped a coat of paint on it in terms of muting it down, making him look a little dirtier. But of course, the giant ele elephant in the room would have to be his post-apocalyptic attire as far as the trench coat, as far as the cargo pants, the armorized belt, the gloves, the, you know, all that stuff as well as the scarf to really hone in on that look that he had in that, that dream sequence. But lo and behold, I feel like so many of those attributes actually ended up amplifying this figure despite not having, like I said, the definitive look. Granted, you're going to have so many little traits that are carried on over from that previously released BVS. I feel like the ones that stand out to me the most as far as simply just copy and paste would have to be the gauntlets and the boots. And to show you what I mean, here we got that original BVS that we got released at the beginning of the year. And you can blatantly see how the gauntlets and the boots are carbon copies. They're textured the same, patterned the same, sculpted the same. In fact, I don't think I even want to say that they're painted on the same because it frankly just looks like they just used pla uh, black plastic, which is definitely the right way to go to make things feel as uh, authentic as possible as far as the way that manufacturing works. So there you have it as far as those very distinct differences. And I would definitely argue that as far as sculpting, the torso looks to be about identical, but before I get to the torso, let's also point out the other things that are most notably different, which of course is the obvious, the trench coat, which you can see right there, sculpted pretty decently, starts off at this really light brown, kind of dirty brown, but then it kind of works down into a faded, very grimy look towards the bottom that's brandishing this kind of like gradient gray, kind of fading to the brim of the bottom of the coat, but there's no mistaking that I personally feel like I've seen this coat a handful of times. There's a little bit of shared DNA with other coats that I've seen. The two that stand out to me the most would probably be either the Page Puncher Constantine or the Endless Winter Batman. In fact, I'm going to lean more towards the Endless Winter Batman, save for the belts that kind of harnesses and pulls the coat together here in the center. And maybe even a little bit of the Hush figure from the Hush Batman 2-pack, where it's not... 
it's got the coat, but it's not swaying towards one direction. It's molded straight and narrowed down towards the bottom. It's got a little bit less of a brim when it comes to this piece right here. I don't remember exactly what it's specifically called, but this area right here of the coat is definitely a lot thinner and kind of plastered down as opposed to the way it kind of stands up on that Hush figure. But frankly, in terms of the creases and the way that it's kind of molded as far as that fabric look, it's damn near one-to-one -one, but not quite you know they ch managed to modify it enough to look at look a little bit more native to the nightmare batman here and then once you get to the kind of <laughs> the sleeves here to then get painted on and kind of added with this extra pieces of mold to make it look like it's actual sleeves with the creases and such except if you're going to be doing something like this you got to make sure to cross your T's and dot your I's, McFarland, because when you don't do that, it's looking a little embarrassing. Because if you look a little carefully, something that I caught very last minute, you could see that they mostly did a decent job of sculpting out the coat for the biceps and the shoulders, but they completely dropped the ball when it came to the elbow joints and even a little bit here above the gauntlets. You can definitely see the texturing and the wrinkles of the original BVS suit that you have over here, only this time painted light, light brown instead of the blue or the bluish tint of the gray that we had going on on the original suit. So they didn't bother to re-sculpt that, and frankly, when they re-sculpted this, but they couldn't bother themselves to go all the way with the entirety of the sleeve, like I said, it kind of stands out as a sore thumb. And that brings us to the cargo pants inside. Once you kind of get the coat out of the way, you'll notice that he's got these cargo pants along with the knee pants that, again, going back to what McFarlane really knows what to do in terms of the way that they sculpt out the creases, the buckles, the straps, the holster-ish kind of thing. It definitely looks like something's missing here. There's an awful lot of negative space when it comes to this area right here. It almost makes me think like he's supposed to have a holster, but because this is the individual wide retail release, they, can't, they had to keep that 12 plus age kind of labeling on the box. So therefore, they can't really imply too, too much here. But we'll have to wait and see if that gold label does anything differently. As far as the sculpting, it's definitely top notch. What is not top notch is the lack of paint detail. You can see that this holster, almost as well as this belt that's kind of drooping here by his waist, right below the now black painted utility belt as opposed to the gold one that he had on the original suit, it just looks like it's lacking so much paint, and I know that that's par for the courts with McFarlane. They like to do that an awful, awful lot, where they get the sculpting just down right, but just so many little paint apps is just begging to be customized by people on Reddit and on the Facebook, uh, the, Mar the McFarlane Facebook group. And I'm looking forward to seeing what people post in the next couple, couple of weeks to see what kind of modifications they bring to their Nightmare Batman, because this is definitely a figure that's almost asking for it, begging for it. At least with those areas that I kind of point out as lackluster. What is not lackluster, frankly, is pretty much everything from the waist up. Because when you, you do kind of reopen a little bit of this coat, which is quite flexible and easy to do. And that kind of lends to the like, likelihood of a lot of people customizing their figures because of how easy it feels to take off the coat. You can even kind of feel the joint kind of peeling back right here and making it easy to slide this whole thing off. But when you do so you get a much deeper look at this torso area where you do see an awful lot more of that BVS suit that he had right underneath. And god damn, I don't, I'm sorry, but this is arguably my favorite part of the overall suit where you have not only the great texture work that he had going on over here on the original BVS suit, but then you have all these different paint applications that you almost really wish they could have done over here. He's lacking the blue tint that I was nitpicking and criticizing in that original review, but now he's got this like smokier, much more muted, dirtier black, well not black, but like a gray that is more, I think closely more resembles the suit you actually had in the movie versus whatever was going on over here. He's got this airbrush texture look to the bat symbol along with the weathering, the scratches, the lining, the, again, that, that I don't know what it is, but... I absolutely adore what's going on over here that it just, again, makes me question why we didn't get this in the first place. I'm pretty indifferent to the scarf right above it right there that is now pulled down, at least on this version. We'll have to wait and see how that gold label compares. But I got to be honest, guys, this is probably as close as we're going to get to a pretty good fill-in, so to speak, for a Ben Affleck Batman 
in the contemporary style when it comes to the BVS wave. Because when it comes to comparing these two, this is probably the one that closely more resembles Ben Affleck. The likeness is still a little shot, don't get me wrong. McFarlane has not been able to come close as how they pulled it off with the tactical suit Justice League version from 2021. That is most definitely the more definitive likeness to Ben Affleck. That's his butt chin, that's his filled in cheeks. Th the resemblance is uncanny, it's there even though it's kind of covered up by the glasses from the tactical suit, but there's no mistaking that it's Ben Affleck. You see that and you go, oh yeah, that's, that's Ben Affleck, it's right there. You still don't see an awful lot of that going on right here, but if you were to pick one of the lesser evils, you look at the new Nightmare Batman versus the original, and you can see a little bit more puffiness to the cheeks. The butt chin, despite not being as pronounced, it's coming through a little better. He's got a little bit more of a shadow. And frankly, taking the whole likeness issue with Ben Affleck out of the equation, this is probably one of the better Batfleck sculpts as far as the cowl is concerned. That we've gotten in some time. If you were to, like I said, kind of imagine to yourself, like that's an empty cowl without any, you know, details pertaining to the likeness of Ben Affleck, etc. It's definitively a great cowl. Whereas over here, it does the job, but you'll notice that it is a little bit more thinned out. It's kind of bearing a stronger resemblance to that of the Justice League cowl, where it's a little bit more narrow around the neck side. Whereas this one's a little stockier, a little beefier, and because of that. I would argue that this is probably the best BVS Ben Affleck cowl. Likeness, like I said, the jury's still out on that. But frankly, again, we have to take what can get, and I feel like this is probably as closest in, the, in that halfway point that we're ever going to meet with McFarlane as far as collectors are concerned. And that head also has no problem making any kind of movements, as well as the rest of the body when it comes to articulation, which is one of the, my concerns that I was having considering that Whenever a character has an awful lot of this stuff going on with like a coat that is kind of encroaching the entirety of the body, I always get kind of worried, but frankly, I'm genuinely surprised overall because the head is definitely able to rotate 360 no problem, tilting slightly up and down is also no problem, side to side is pretty good, it's not the best, but it's there, and then the arms can definitely rotate vertically 360 no problem, as well as extending towards the sides on the hinge. It's even a little ratcheted, though the one on my right is a little sticky, kind of likes to fold down a little bit only because the coat is in fact pressing it ever so slightly. It does kind of feel like there's a little bit of shrugging, but it's not a full butterfly joint, so you can kind of feel like there's a little bit of nudging forwards and backwards. But it's not the best that I've ever seen on a McFarlane, but that's only because the coat is there. I feel like it, without the coat, once people start to make those modifications, they're not going to have a problem with that. Biceps are definitely able to rotate 360, no problem. And despite my criticism of the kind of skewed over elbow joints right there with the texture carried on over from the BVS that they didn't double check, they're still able to bend at the two joints, no problem. And... As much as I'm liking the overall articulation and build quality of the figure, still would have preferred if they had gone with the, those more contemporary joints for both the ankles and the wrists. So I'm a little bit spoiling here ahead of the articulation, but both of them do have those ball joints that are technically still allow the wrist to fully rotate 360 no problem and can still bend inwards and outwards on the wrist. And the ankles, like I said, they're holding that ball joint that I'm not the biggest fan of, but at least it does the job and... Hasn't really presented too many bad problems, so they can definitely pivot the foot backwards, I mean, I'm sorry, upwards and downwards and rotate no problem. I just wish that we could have brought that much more modern joint to that flushes with the rest of the boot and looks a lot more natural. But what is better is the torso articulation. This is where we get into very surprising territory because I was expecting it to be kind of poor considering that the coat right here is, like I said, holding everything together, but this is some of the more fluid articulation I've ever seen on a coated figure because even though sure the coat is there and because of it it's not going to extend towards the back all that much but that comes by nature so obviously you can't really do too much about that but when it comes to rotation both the mid torso cut and the waist cut fully rotate 360 no problem feels pretty fluid nothing feels like it's kind of coming into contact except maybe the mid torso kind of starts to get a little bit of resistance turning but crunching inwards Look at that, that's almost a full 90 degree angle right about right there. 
crunching side to side on the obliques is also pretty complimentary, though, like I said, just mind the coat kind of getting in your way. But once you kind of push it off to the side, you see just how much of the torso really is flexing and kind of helping you out in that regard. So I'm generally surprised by how much mobility was granted with the torso, all things considered. And then the top leg joints are also no different. They can fully extend towards the front about that far. It does kind of stop a little bit right below the 90 degree angle only because of the double belt so it almost kind of makes me wonder if maybe if they had sculpted just one belt as opposed to two and kind of again made it seem like he wasn't sagging his pants so badly because that's also one of the things that i really don't like about the cargo pants is that i don't know if it's all that screen accurate but man my guy you know he's not necessarily in the streets like that well granted he was in post-apocalyptic Metropolis, I think it was in that sequence. So, I, 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 I still don't see how there's any logical reasoning as to why he's sagging his pants so goddamn badly. Because I personally feel like they could have either nuked the utility belt or kept the utility belt, but just pull the pants right underneath and get rid of the sculpting of this belt and just kind of tuck it underneath so that maybe this diaper piece would have been a little higher and allowed the legs to extend a little bit more favorably towards the front because even I have to admit now after trying them uh, another instance here I thought that they were better but honestly I take it back they're actually not too great when it comes to extending towards the front so live retraction there though extending towards the back is not too bad it does allow a little bit of gapage there on the top leg joint and extension towards the sides is also not the worst thing in the world but it definitely could have been done a little better because like i said how everything feels so saggy around this area they definitely could have fixed that and when it comes to the knees they can definitely bend at the two joints but just mind the way that the cargo pants are sculpted because it creates so much as i like to call cuttage where the knees then look a little unnatural because of how everything is so paneled and sculpted here around the knee area and as mentioned before we have the ball joints for the ankles that i've already covered but right on the front here we have the toes that could have been also a little better they're a little stubby but they technically still allow the toes to bend fully all the way up right there for some extra support though to be honest i haven't really felt the need for them too much because considering he's wearing a giant ass coat i Never really felt like he's been all that top heavy. He's been able to stay in a pretty stable position as is like that. Granted, when you get a little bit dynamic, like I said, you see an awful lot of the cutting happening with the legs. So though the legs are a little bit of a mixed bag, the general top half of the body, as far as detailing, sculpting, and articulation, is pretty surprising. I just wish that this thing could have been peak if the accessories were a little bit better and not as barren. Though, there is a bit of a loophole that McFarlane was able to jump through to be able to potentially fix that in an upcoming video. But for now, this version of Nightmare Batman simply just comes with two additional accessories. One of which is a set of binoculars, which is quite literally a black piece of 3D printed plastic shaped to look like binoculars. No detail, no paint apps, no nothing. However, the other piece is a little better as far as the paint applications to make it look a little airbrushed and dirty, which are going to be these goggles. Except, I gotta be honest, there's a part of me that almost wonders why this was a separate piece because there's only really one thing you can do with it, which is to put it on top of the cowl to make it look like it did in, during the Nightwear sequence. Which is also sculpted in a way that doesn't fully kind of flush all the way down. They're not meant to be worn. They're simply just meant to kind of dress up the cowl. So if you want like a very straightforward, clean cowl look, you can do that. But then if you want it to look like it does in the nightmare sequence, simply just put on the goggles on top. But at that point, it's like, okay, well, he's not really fully wearing the goggles. He just has them kind of pulled up right here on top of his forehead. So, okay, you know, I, I it's one of those cases where I'm like, I appreciate the option, but the option ends up being kind of empty. I, I still kind of wish that maybe would have had like an additional set of hands because he comes with these default gripping hands that are designed to hold the binoculars. However, the binoculars themselves end up being a little problematic because they're sculpted in a way where they fit into at least one hand, but they end up being a little bit problematic when it comes to trying to put him in a pose like he's holding the binoculars with both hands. I've tried it a couple of times and it always feels like he's about to start snapping and breaking the binoculars. They're actually a little bit on the delicate side here in the middle part right here. To the point where it almost feels like they're about to start warping and breaking. Whereas 
posing him to hold the binoculars simply in one hand up to his face, up to his eyes, it works. It completes the illusion, and I have no qualms with that. But when I try to pose him with like both binoculars in both hands up to his face, nothing really flushes well. I don't know if it's because of the articulation or the way that this, the proportioning of these binoculars should have been maybe a little bit wider, a little bit more to spread across those both hands so that it meets them halfway. I don't know. But they're a little bit on the lackluster side and they don't complement the figure as well as they could have. And I know that technically McFarlane probably has an answer to that in the form of a gold label exclusive, but there's a loophole to that because this is not necessarily the most family-friendly version of Batman that was brought forward to the screen. And as such, McFarlane will have to come up with a way to jump over that hurdle. So for now... If you're walking into a Walmart or a Target, this is effectively what you're dealing with. But even with those criticisms aside, I would say that this is probably my favorite interpretation of the bat flick, at least within the confines of BVS. Time will tell if maybe that gold label will fix some of the accessory issues I was having, but even if we're not able to get a more definitive Batman without doing any kind of, like I said, custom paint jobs, uh, accessory work, what have you, to this guy over here, god damn, I gotta be honest, the more I played with this guy, the more I was able to kind of turn around and go from my least excited figure, the one that I was looking forward to the least, and instantly shot up to, in my opinion, a bit of an underrated gem. Technically speaking, he's still going to be sitting at an 8 out of 10, but he is borderlining 9 if it wasn't for, like I said, that saggy bit of the pants here that kind of lends to a few of the issues that I was having with the articulation, and maybe an additional accessory or two. Again, like I said, I would have gladly taken some fisted hands because he only comes with the two holding hands and that's it. I mean, come on, that's an easy thing that you could have tossed in there without violating any of the 12 plus rules and still being able to have your gold label two-pack later on the side, Todd, for the side or for Walmart. So you didn't necessarily have to do anything problematic there, and that could have been an easy fix, but I guess that's going to be a topic for a whole different video once that two-pack comes in. For now, though, I will argue that if by some chance you already have this guy, I would still recommend picking this guy up should you either come across him in store or you did manage to put down that pre-order for the wave. Because I frankly don't feel like you're going to be all that disappointed. For now, I want to hear what you guys think as far as the BVS wave overall. Do, are you guys excited to get these new versions of Batman since we already technically got this standalone release? We're now getting Nightmare Batman, Armor Batman, a version of the Wonder Woman, even though there's not much different to her, as you guys have already seen in my short. And then that Doomsday 2-pack, as well as gold label exclusives, whatnot. Do you think McFarlane's overdoing it on the BVS wave? What's another wave that you want to see him tackle? I'm pretty certain that right now, as we speak, he's probably working on a returns wave. I frankly feel like the only thing left to check box here as far as Ben Affleck's turn on the Dark Knight would have to be a Justice League Batman. And by that I mean a proper Justice League. So not the tactical suit, not the armored suit, not any kind of inverted version. I'm talking about like that suit, but not this one. So the one that's like a little bit more muted in color, has the much more narrow cowl, the, pa the weird paneling on the abdomen. But, you know, to complete the set, he kind of has to make it, right? So... The only time will tell if we're going to get a revised version in that regard or if maybe he's finally going to move on and see what he brings us with returns, what other versions of Batman he's probably going to be bringing. I don't know. We'll see. But if you guys have some kind of wish list developed, let me know down in the comments. While you guys are down there, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Thumbs down if you did not. As always, big thanks to the people who are supporting the channel as a level 2 executive producer, Tom Bowling. And you guys know what to do. Stay humble. I'll catch you guys later.